tired of bloating operating system that slow down your machine, track your data, or just feel, eh. what if I told you there is a lightweight, privacy-focused alternative that's powerful enough for developers, simple enough for daily use, and completely free? That's Anduin OS, a Linux-based OS designed for speed, security, and customization. It has a customized GNOME desktop that mirrors Windows 11 center taskbar and rounded corners, so there is almost zero learning curve. And at just around 2GB, the ISO installs quickly and runs smoothly. Even on the Modus hardware, you get full access to Ubuntu's vast app repository, plus Flatpak and Wine support for almost any app you need. There is no telemetry, no tracking, just a clean open source experience. Well, today I'm gonna show you how to install it on your computer, so stay tuned and let's get started. But before we start, if you're first time to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. This will help me a lot to grow my channel and bring you more helpful, interesting videos. Also, if you find this video helpful, please support with a like. I appreciate it very much and let's get started. Okay, so the step number one, we need to go to any browser and then go to the official website, which is andoingos.com. Here you're going to find all the up-to-date information about Anduin OS. And that's where we're going to download the official ISO file. You always want to make sure to download it from the official website and then verify it for integrity to make sure it's not being corrupted during the download, which I'm going to show you how to do that in the second step. But over here, you can read about all the information you need and you can choose the Anduin OS version that you like. As you can see, Anduin OS offers two version branches. One is LTS, another one is standard. The LTS stands for the Learn Term Support. So if you're looking for the stable Learn Term Support, you gotta download the LTS version, which is this one over here. But if you're looking to explore the latest features, you can try out the standard version, which is this one here, 1.3. But keep in mind that it only includes support till January 2026, while the Learn Term Support comes with the support until April 2029, which is really great. As you can see, they've been all released pretty lately. This one was released in January 2025, and the standard one was released in May 2025. So that is pretty close. So I'm gonna download the Learn Term Support one, but if you wanna try out the standard one, you can do that. So simply click on the download button, then choose the language that you like. You can choose English or a lot of languages here. I think it's about 20 different languages. So we're just gonna stick to English, but you can definitely choose the language that you need. Then you can also choose to download it via the torrent link, or you can download it directly. I prefer to download it directly, but you can also use torrent, doesn't really matter. And then we're gonna check the checksum to make sure it hasn't been corrupted and it's a genuine file. So let's just click on this direct HTTP. This will open us the download window, click save, and it will start downloading. As you can see, it is 1.7 gigabyte, so it shouldn't be very long, but it of course depends on the download speed. Also, what we need to download is the checksum, so click on the checksum. We're gonna need that checksum later when we're gonna verify the integrity of this downloaded ISO file. And as you can see, this is the checksum. So we just keep it open until the second step. I'm just gonna fast forward it because it's taken too long and I'll meet you in a second step. All right, so the step number two, after we have successfully downloaded the ISO file, before we flash it onto the USB drive, we need to make sure to verify its integrity because during the download, sometimes there are some bits and pieces can be lost. Or we also need to make sure that the file hasn't been tampered with. It is actually done very simple. I'm using 7z program for that. You can download it from this website, 7-zip.org. It is a great little free piece of software with open source and you can use it to archive, unarchive and work with different archive files. So I highly recommend using this program. After you have downloaded and installed, go ahead and right click on the downloaded ISO, go to the 7-zip and then go to the bottom, CRC SHA and we need to click on the SHA-256. It will calculate this alphanumeric sequence called SHA-256 hash sum. 
and we need to compare it to this one over here. The easiest way to do it is to simply copy this here, then open the simple notepad and paste this alphanumeric sequence that we have calculated and copy this alphanumeric sequence over here and go back to the notepad, press Ctrl plus F and paste it over here and just click find next. There we go. So as you can see, it has found this number here. That means this is an exact match and we can be sure that the downloaded file is safe to use. So now we can safely go ahead and flash it onto the USB drive. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's continue with the step three. We're gonna need to create a bootable USB drive. So we need to flash the ISO onto the USB drive using a flashing tool. Anduin is recommending to use Rufus to create a bootable USB drive. So we can download it from the official website. Just click here, then scroll down and download the one for your system. I'm using Windows 64 bit, so I'm gonna click on this one. This is a standard one, or you can use the portable one if you like. After that, go ahead and open up this Rufus. And it is actually a super sophisticated flashing tool that I have a separate video about. If you wanna know all the details, all the settings about this program, I have a separate video you can check out. But in this video, we're just gonna quickly set it up and flash the ISO onto the USB drive and not gonna get much into details. But if you're interested to learn about this program, I'm gonna attach a link in the description for the separate video. Make sure to check it out. All right, nevertheless, we're gonna need a USB drive with at least two gigabyte because the file we're gonna be flashing on is 1.73 gigabyte. But of course, nowadays you can probably never find such a small USB drive. So you can use like a four gigabyte or anything higher than that. Anyway, I couldn't find any smaller one. I'm gonna be using a 32 gigabyte, but after you use it to install the operating system on your computer, you can format it and get it back to the normal state so you can use it to copy files and use it just like normal. Go ahead and plug in the USB drive into the computer. In the device, select the device that you have connected. Make sure you choose the right USB drive and make sure that this USB drive doesn't contain any important files. Before you flash the ISO onto the USB drive, copy all the important files from the USB drive or make sure that it is empty because it will format the USB drive and remove everything so you're not gonna be able to recover it. After that, go ahead and select the ISO file and click start. Also, because it is ISO hybrid image, we need to choose DD mode, not the ISO mode, even though Rufus is recommended to use ISO mode. But if we go to the undoing instructions, they're telling us to make sure to select DD mode to create a bootable USB drive. So that's what we're gonna do, press okay. It warns you that all data will be removed from the USB drive. So once again, make sure it is empty or that you have copied every important file from the USB drive, then press OK. And then press OK again. This should take a few moments. The ISO file is not very large, so it's probably gonna take a minute or two, depending on the speed of the USB drive. If you're using a USB 3.0, it should be quicker. If you're using USB 2.0, then it might take a bit longer. Okay, it's all ready. Now we can go ahead and proceed to the next step and install Anduin OS on our computer. Go ahead and close it and remove the USB drive. First insert the bootable USB drive into your computer and start your computer. Before start booting into the existing operating system on your computer, press the boot menu key. This varies depending on your motherboard on my computer, it is F12, but I'm gonna put a list of all possible keys for different computer manufacturers. So just choose the one that is designed for your computer. After that, select your USB drive from the list and hit enter. If you wanna set up the secure boot, make sure you enable it in the BIOS settings. If it's disabled, you're gonna need to enroll security keys later, but that's no problem, it's up to you. All right, once we start loading from the USB drive, we can choose to try and install Anduin OS. That's the first option. Or if something doesn't work, you should try Save Graphics because it will disable all the features and will just load bare bones to make sure that it's gonna work. 
But if you try it for the first time, just go ahead and click try and install and do an OS and press enter. It should start loading. And there we go. It actually loaded super quick, just a split second. This is called the live environment. This is where you can try and do an OS, see how you like it, see what features it has. And you can basically use it just like any normal operating system. The only difference would be is that when you shut it down, it will remove and wipe out everything. So next time you start, it will start from scratch and it's not going to save any progress. And of course, keep in mind, it might be a bit slow if it's running from the USB drive because it's not installed on an internal SSD drive like you would normally have it installed. So it might be a bit slow. So check out everything you have. As you can see, it looks pretty nice. You got a system monitor here, you got settings, you got disk usage analyzer, RAM box, passwords and keys, videos, document viewer, network tools, Qualculate, then clocks, text editor, weather, camera, shot well, app store, console files. Actually, I want to check out the app store, see how it looks. And yeah, so this is an official application store of Anduino West. You can find most popular applications. To get started, pick the app from the menu on the left. Okay, so there we go. So this is actually an app store inside the web browser. So it's not like a separate app. So if you need to find a web browser, you can download Chrome OS, Chromium, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Opera. Wow, this is pretty cool. So install, it's got the code here. And this is our favorite pseudo app update. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty straightforward. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Actually, you know, I would say it's not any different than Windows. So let's go ahead and proceed with the next step. And we're going to install Anduin OS. Yeah, it was just a bit more native support from popular applications such as Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe Photoshop or other Windows specific programs. I don't see why would anybody want to use Windows anymore because this looks awesome and it's free. And because it's Linux, it's much safer. There is less viruses. Anyway, let's continue with the installation. Click on this link here, install Anduin OS. This should run the installer. So once you get the installer running, you can choose the language. Look how many languages there is. You can choose from almost any language you can imagine. Well, I'm just going to stick with English for now and click continue. Then you get to choose the keyboard layout, whatever you prefer. Let's just keep English for now. Then in this step, you can choose whether you want to download updates while installing and doing a OS. This usually saves time after the installation. So yeah, why not? You get the latest updates and you don't need to do it after the installation. Also, this step is very, very important. Install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. This is important if you have proprietary drivers for the Wi-Fi or the graphic card. Make sure to check it to install it during the installation process. This way you're going to have everything working right out of the box. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue. Now in this step, installation type, you can choose how you want to install and do an OS on your computer. If you choose the first option, you raise disk and install and do an OS, this will delete all your programs, documents, photos, music, and other files in all operating systems. So make sure you don't have any important files on your computer because it will remove everything and format the drive. Make sure to copy everything before doing that or even make sure that it's empty. The second option, you can choose something else. This will allow you to manually set up your disk. It is a bit more complicated process, so it is not recommended for the beginners, but it actually allows you to set up and do an OS the way you like it. You can install it in a dual boot alongside with Windows, or even if you're installing it on the computer by itself, you can create or resize different partitions yourself and choose multiple partitions for and do an OS. I have a separate video where I do it with Linux Mint, creating a dual boot setup with Windows. So if you want to do that, I'm going to put a link in the description. You can check out that video. But in this video, I'm only going to show you how to do it simple for the beginners. Just erase disk and install and do an OS and then press install now.
it just tells you all the summary just double check it and press continue then choose your location and press continue after that type in your username pick a password i usually like to choose login automatically this saves some time but if you're using it on the computer that somebody has access to you should put require my password to log in then press continue and let it work we're going to wait a few minutes until it's going to copy all the files and finish the installation process after that we're going to continue on boot and do an os and have a quick look at it all right so the installation is complete we can go ahead and restart the computer so just click on this restart now it will prompt you to remove the usb drive and then press enter make sure to remove it because if you don't do that it will start booting from the usb drive again and you're going to go through exact same process after you have removed the usb drive press enter now it should start booting from your internal disk all right it loaded super quick and as you can see it has already started from the internal ssd drive this is why it's much quicker even though even from the usb drive was pretty quick after installing and doing os you can customize it explore it and just use it on everyday basis it has a lot of different things you can check out so feel free to explore it because it's a debian based linux distro you can easily update and do in os by running commands such as sudo apt update sudo apt upgrade let's go ahead and run them and see if it will actually update so there are some updates not much but we can go ahead and update anyway this way we're gonna have everything up to date To update and do an OS itself, you can run this command. It says the current system is already up to date, no update is available, so we're all good. That's it, it is recommended to run this command regularly to keep the system up to date. But this is it, I hope you find this video helpful, if you like it, please support it with your like. Also, if you're first time to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. If you're still gonna have any questions, comments, suggestions, please drop them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer your questions and help you if I can. Also, if you like what I'm doing and would like to support my channel, you can use Super Thanks or just buy me a coffee. The links are in the description. Also, if you would like to learn more about Linux, you can check out my Linux playlist. But this is it for today. I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.